Hello and welcome to Unreal Return to Napali. Or as it was originally known, Unreal Mission Pack 1 Return to Napali. It is an expansion pack for Unreal, developed by Legend Entertainment, as you can see at the bottom left right there, as well as Epic Games. This expansion pack was released in June of 1999. So, like with the Unreal video, I will spend this one mostly talking about history and such. And the second video will be where the action will start. So, in the Unreal intro video, I mentioned that much started with the Unreal Beta of 1998, which was previously leaked, and that contained around three times as much content as we got in the final Unreal. Well, um, although it's not really uh, certain what happened, but I think this is about what happened there. Basically, during 1998, Epic were busy working on another expansion pack, which they called Bot Pack, and uh, they did know that they have a lot of content in the beta that didn't make the cut, so they talked with their publisher, GT Interactive, which was later known as Infogrames, uh, and ask them if they know anyone who can make something out of their old maps into something they could release. And since GT Interactive had recently acquired Legend Entertainment, they said, well, sure, we have this studio here that would be pleased to do that. And so Epic gave Legend the beta maps and told them to make an expansion pack, which was then codenamed U-Pack, without the C, just U-Pack. <laughs> um, and well, the end result is this, but of course not all the maps in Unreal Return to Napali are from the beta version, and also not all beta maps uh, made it into Unreal Return to Napali. Uh, unfortunately, things like Scar Temples and Mercenary Ships didn't make the cut, even though they are in the beta. You can try the beta, though. It was uh, converted to be compatible with the current Unreal. Uh, so, as I mentioned, Unreal Return to Napali is officially called Mission Pack 1 which is kind of not true, because um, it's not just a mission pack, it also adds new things to the bot part of the game. Um, and it's also not strictly one, because it's the only one expansion pack. Uh, the thing is, there was a mission pack 2 planned, however, it never made it. Not sure if even production ever started on it. There were plans about it, but never ever actually materialized. Which is too bad, because like I said, there was still a lot of beta content that they could have used. So, uh, after the release, as mentioned in the intro of Unreal there, there were issues with the patches for Unreal Return to Nepali things with network compatibility breaks and such, but thankfully it's now all fixed by patch 227. In fact, if you look at this, I am currently using version 227J. This is a pre-release version at this point in time. Um, hmm. So, um, at the time of release, Unreal and Return to Napoli were separate executables. And you could either run Unreal or run Return to Napali, and that's mostly for network compatibility, so that people who owned both could play on Unreal servers and then play with more people. Um, 
but eventually Unreal and Unreal Return to Nepali were released as one and called Unreal Gold in a unified UI. So this is exactly what we are playing here. Um, so about my playthrough here. This time there will be no manual reading because there is no interesting manual for Unreal Return to Nepali. There was no manual shit with Unreal Gold for Unreal Return to Nepali at all. Um, and uh, the manual that shipped with the original Return to Nepali actually doesn't have any interesting information. The only information that there is is about the three new enemies that we will find, and it's kind of generic. The only interesting bit there is that the manual establishes that the UMS that we will be seeing a lot stands for Unified Military Services, or the Terran Unified Military Services, as they call it. Um, the descriptions of the uh, enemy types I put into the Leandri archives over at leandri.beyondunreal.com, so you can read them there if you're interested. And about Unreal Enhanced Edition, there are a few maps for Unreal Return to Nepali, uh, the very first ones. Some of them are quite important, but at this point in time I cannot showcase you them. Because the Linux build that I am using at the moment is a bit broken, and I need to wait for a second release in order to be able to launch any 227 only maps. So I will do it similarly to how I did with the first Unreal, in that I will uh, do an extra um, video showing some things off once I get the build. Unless, of course, I get the updated build soon enough, which might actually happen. And, uh... Yeah, so, what I'm using to record all of this... Unlike the last time, this time I'm actually using the native Linux client on OpenSUSE 13.1, which is, of course, a GNU Linux distribution. I'm recording everything through Simple Screen Recorder, which uses FFmpeg as a backend, of course, because FFmpeg is amazing. Um, I'm recording this actually at 48 frames per second, because YouTube recently added support for higher frame rates. I'm not sure if I want to keep it, though. Uh, it's a balancing act, because this is kind of pushing my system to the bounds of what it can do. I will see how smooth the gameplay feels and then decide whether I want to keep it or not. Um, yeah, so the simple screen recorder is using H.264 as the default thing that it renders into because X.264 is blazingly fast. It will now use about one and a half megabytes per second, which is really reasonable, I have to say. And I did a few tests about how to uh, best upload things into YouTube, and the result is that it's really best to not re-encode it into anything, just use the source material, and that is what I'm going to do. It's also of added benefit in that I don't have to spend time actually re-encoding it. And since the file sizes are large, that actually saves quite a bit of time, which I can use to send more data to YouTube. <laughs> uh, about how I have everything set up to record things on Linux, I have posted a thread over at Old Unreal, so you can read it to find out how to make Unreal work well with Simple Screen Recorder. So that is that. Huh, short video here.
because I didn't need to explain that much history since I already did that on the Unreal episode. So I will see you in the next video where we will actually start the action. See you all then, later.